Ladies, what's the weirdest fetish a guy has dropped on you all of a sudden with little to no warning? Were you with it or against it? Please like, subscribe and comment so I can create more videos for you. This will probably be buried, but a guy I met on a dating app just started choking me, hard and with no warning, in the middle of 6. Decided during 6, with no pre-discussion or safe word, was the appropriate time to tell me that he liked choking girls until they were unconscious. He liked them waking up not knowing what's going on, being fucked really hard. Needless to say this was horrifying, I was not okay with it. And he ruined sexual choking for me entirely, which I used to like, not as hard as that or to the point of passing out though dart. Huge bummer all around, would not recommend this strategy if you want this from a sexual partner. I'm a guy, I've passed out from being choked as a kid messing around before. It is not fun to come out of, you feel numb and in a daze and very scared. Fuck that shit. I would never do that to anyone. Unless they were into it. I met this guy and he was just a fling for a while. I knew he was into anal kinky stuff and I'll try anything once but I eventually moved out of state but we would still talk all the time and Skype. We'd fool around on Skype and send each other dirty pics and we became real comfortable with each other. One day he said he had a confession that when he watched porn his favorite part was the cum shot. I didn't think anything of it I figured guys were into that. Well one day on, Skype he told me that he liked the taste of his own cum. And that he liked to cum in his own mouth. Being completely fascinated by people I of course asked how that was possible. Did he like shoot it up in the air and catch it? He said, want me to show you now I don't think that if we were in the same room I would have been able to handle what was about to happen but I truly think he had some homosexual tendencies but was too scared to tell anyone. Maybe because he was a police officer. I'm not sure. But he was sweet and a good guy so I was like what the hell. You only live once right so I said sure. Knock yourself out. So he proceeds to jerk off and then right before he comes he completely flips upside down on the couch with his legs in the air and his dick pointed down. Comes and it drips down into his mouth. It's legitimately the craziest thing I have ever seen but he told me how happy they made him and how he's always been so nervous about revealing that to anyone. So I was happy to help. He wanted to paint my toenails, then ejaculate on them. I was down as long as I approved the color. He did a great job. Even put little hearts on the big toes and gave me a foot rub. It didn't do much for me sexually, but I got a pedicure and we had fun. Edit. He did wait for the polish to dry first. There was some dirty talk, though mostly I just wiggled my toes at him. It made him laugh and turned him on. It was fun. As much as I don't get foot fetishes, I would kind of love a guy that was in two feet. You think a foot rub is hot? Absolutely, please go crazy. I have been dating this man for two years that I met on Poff. About six months in. He told me he had a balloon fetish. He said he had been jacking off with them since he was a teen, and his fantasy was to have actual sex on one. He said he had always been afraid to tell anyone, but he sensed that I would be the type of person who wouldn't run away. At first I was like OMG, but then I was like fuck it, what's the harm in trying something new? So he brings out this huge 6 foot long balloon that he has to blow up with an air pump. The thing is huge, and he tells me he owns a ton of them, all shapes and sizes. At first it was weird trying to straddle that humongous balloon and leaning over it so he could fuck me doggy style on it, all the while being terrified that it was going to pop in my face at any given moment. But I got used to it and we do it often. It has popped in my face quite a few times and we both get a good laugh. I figure if it makes him happy then, why not? Also if anybody has any suggestions on new things to try with the balloons, let me know. Honestly was surprised I didn't find a balloon fetish store sooner. It's awesome for you to that you're into it though. I had been seeing this gal who was shamed sexually for the smallest things by her ex-fiance, like the fact that she couldn't hold and squirting. We talked extensively about stuff I was into but she was really cautious given her past experiences. One night I had slept over and in the morning when I woke up I found a pair of her, 
Freshly laundered panties strewn over my backpack with a note telling me to take them home with me and I'd receive further instructions via text. Just as it gets to the night before I see her next, I get this long line of texts from her dancing around what she wanted, and then finally she got to the point and said you know I have a thing for cum, so I want you to make a video of yourself coming on my panties. Afterwards put them in a ziplock bag and bring them down tomorrow night with you. I'm thinking okay, I'm a little weirded out that I'm carrying her panties around, dunno why but I just felt weird about it, but decided I was game. Went to her house the next night and we went out to dinner. After getting back to her place she dropped her pants and proudly showed me she was wearing said panties to dinner. I know it sounds like a real tame thing, and I get that sense of some people like an ownership thing when it comes to sex. But it was something so out of the blue and as kinky as I thought I was, it was something wholly new to me. I went over to his house for the first time and he wanted to go from the first kiss to fisting. He was just awkward and had never had sex before so he didn't know how to broach the subject. I politely said no and we laughed it off and continued with our date. He turned out to be an overall sweet dude and we're still together. And X200B, still haven't let him fist me though. Edit, wow, gold, silver, and 11k upvotes for not getting fisted, thanks guys. I dated a guy that was into virgin roleplay. He also believed he had a huge enough dick to make anyone bleed virgin or not. When I didn't bleed after we had some rough sex, I'm totally cool with rough sex, he got pissy. He said I should have bleed because I was tight enough, but I guess he didn't realize that vaginas are super elastic. He was convinced I had cheated on him before we had sex that day, it was really weird. I'm all for pretending to be a curious virgin, but I can't make my imaginary high men pop and bleed dude. I still laugh about it to this day. My ex had a dog shaped penis dildo that they bought from Bad Dragon, they had used it on me once and asked if I liked it. I said yes. They then proceeded to tell me in detail graphically that if I like this just imagine what a real dog would feel like. That we needed to buy a big breed of dog, like a mastiff or a golden retriever so that I could have sex with the dog and they could watch. That it would turn them on so much knowing our family dog was secretly fucking me behind closed doors. I was absolutely horrified, the relationship only lasted 4 months and it still makes me sick thinking about it. The relationship only lasted 4 months, that's like 2.33 years in dog years. Nice stuff. No warning at all. I knew he was kinky and slightly weird but not, like, dangerously weird until he was having difficulty reaching orgasm. I said something along the lines of how can I help you finish and he slides a fake magician's knife out of the nightstand next to him and said he had a stabbing fetish. Wanted, me to pretend to be murdered by him. It was a nuclear red flag but there I was, he's already inside me, so I'm like whatever, I'll go along with this. He came. I left, the next day my abdomen was totally beat the fuck up. Bruises all over my torso and chest from him jamming a stupid plastic knife into me. It opened my eyes to how sexual stabbing scenes are in horror films as he explained that's where the fetish began, from growing up watching shit like Halloween. Never again those shudders. He really missed the opportunity to pull it out from behind your ear. Not me but a friend of mine was talking to this guy who said before we go any further, I need to come clean about something. Please don't think I'm strange. I've got a really weird fetish. Instantly we think it's gonna be something extreme, maybe involving bodily fluids. I don't want to kink shame but, just something downright gross. He says, I need to be wearing a fleece. Patagonia was his preference. It's like... Innocent compared to the ones in this thread but just bizarre. I've got one. First serious relationship. I already knew he was into goth alternative girls and big boobs, pretty standard. Then he slowly reveals he's into being dominated, blindfolding, teasing, light choking, and also cat girls, and girls with other animal features like cowgirls with six boobs, dart. I thought he told me everything until one night he tells me his biggest secret is his biggest fetish and nobody knows. He keeps hinting at things and saying stuff like it can only happen at certain times and I think he's going to say he's into periods or something. 
Then he reveals he's massively and uncontrollably into pregnant women. Especially tiny girls but with enormous overinflated boobs and bellies. Plus this was stacked on top of the other fetishes, so cue him asking me to tie him up whilst wearing a collar, huge furry tail and the biggest food baby I could manage. He even asked me if I'd consider inflating myself with air. Noped out of there. Edit, just to answer some facts, yes, he was also heavily into anime, and all things Japanese to a worrying extent, and yes he was, I felt, somewhat obsessed with sex masturbation. It had to be several times a day else he'd accidentally wake me up at 2am furiously jacking off. Fetishes I missed out, he also claimed to be an ephebophile, into teenagers or adults that look like teenagers, dart. He wanted to drink my breast milk and tried to get me to take supplements to induce it. He strongly hinted that he was a furry and wanted to be a wolf but I couldn't get him to full admit it. No, I am not a big titty goth gf. Everyone knew that was his type but I'm just an average boob vanilla girl, see profile photo. And no I haven't had any messages from people looking for a big titty goth gf. Actually when I say I noped out of there, I tried my best to accept it put up with it be supportive for 3 plus years but he could never compromise. I just recently broke my hand and it's currently in a cast. I posted a photo of me in the cast on my knitting business Instagram, small following, almost all women. I got the normal likes from people I interact with, but some weird likes and new follows from guys as well. One commented asking how bad the break was. I got messages like how did you injure yourself? And how many fingers are in the cast? And can I sign the cast? I pulled up a couple profiles to see what sort of accounts these guys follow, and yep. Lots of casts. And X200B. That's the day I learned that cast fetishes are a thing. That's also the day I learned to be very careful with my hashtags. And X200B. Eater. Although you've all given me great ideas, the hashtags I used were not so creative. In fact I went back and checked and the only cast related hashtag I used was broken hand. Not even anything about the cast itself. Not sure if this counts, but I worked as a pro dominatrix for a couple years and my ex-girlfriend and I would often do duos together as it was a nice way of spending time together making money and we had great chemistry together as doms. Years later she is still a dear friend. She hits me up letting me know she has a really well off client who had a very specific breath play fetish. Since I was very experienced with breath play and felt very comfortable doing it safely, she asked if I'd be down to make a couple hundred bucks. I get to the dungeon, we smoke weed and wait for the guy. He comes in with a bunch of rolls of plastic. Turns out, he had a very specific fetish for this kind of plastic, that was very smooth and soft. It wasn't only a breath play suffocation scene. But he wanted to be totally mummified in said plastic. I'd say he was in his late 50s early 60s, just looked like someone's dad. We spent 2 hours binding him in this plastic, putting plastic over his face until he'd scream his muffled safe word, as he'd gasp for air, and then sitting on his mummified metapod looking body and smoke joints on top of him, tickle him, and then ignore him and talk amongst ourselves. It all looked like something straight out of a Dexter scene and honestly it would probably look very creepy to an outsider. This cycle of mummifying him and suffocating him lasted for 2 hours, until he asked if we could cut him free, then he jerked off for like 1 minute and blew his load all over the pile of plastic. Weirdly enough, nicest and most normal client I've had. During our aftercare session, this is where you encourage your sub, tell them how well they did, cuddle them and check in with them so they're not traumatized by the scene. He spilled his guts to us. He said he felt out of control in his life and having his breath controlled and wrapped in the plastic made him feel safe and comforted him. Wow, poor dude. That actually seems like a good way to handle stuff like that happening in your life. Whatever floats your boat. There was one guy who was really into having a free household. Meaning, I guess sex and nudity in front of the children. He was kind of vague about what he was suggesting, so I kept on trying to steer things back into the realm of sanity and be all, yeah, sexy times, nakedness, once the kids are in bed. But then he went into this elaborate fantasy about me showering with our teenage daughter, not actually ours, 
this was still in the realm of fantasy, and I was like, wait, you're actually getting off on the idea of the kids being involved, or at least witnessing all of this. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, I'm out. I don't have a ton of limits, but kids is one. He also kept calling me mommy, even after I asked him to stop. I actually have a child who is still young enough to call me mommy. If there is one guaranteed way to turn me off, that would be it. If I recall, he also referred to his dick as his fuckstick. That would be a hard number. It's not even really a limit, of yours. Should minors be involved in sexual acts with adults? Number. When I was 18 I was really into photography. My main source of inspiration were those badass actresses from the past who happened to smoke or hold cigarettes on black and white photos, think Audrey Hepburn, Anna Karina, Grace Kelly and the likes, dart. I glammed up, took photos of myself and put them online. One guy really liked those photos, and I was glad someone got my art. He also liked old films, so we decided to go see one together. After the film, he offered me a cigarette and asked if I smoked. I said number. He then begged me to smoke one now and wanted to take photos of it and film it. It felt weird, but I out of my naivety I didn't really think of anything. He got really turned on by this, and started moaning, and wanted me to blow cigarette smoke in his face. He then said that there's nothing hotter than kissing a girl after she's had a cigarette. At that point it was so weird that I came up with some excuse and left ASAP. He then wrote me that, he has smoking fetish and gets off by girls smoking. I don't smoke nor do I like the smell of it, so that was that, ain't gonna kill those lungs of mine for that. I was in a long term relationship with a guy who was into feet and that was actually pretty fine. He did talk about it first, so didn't come as a surprise. Also, it was a good workout for my feet, haha. <laughs> I was in a long term relationship with a guy who was into feet and that was actually pretty fine. Being with someone with a foot fetish is a gift. Massages all the time, and he never complains about me buying new shoes. My best friend told me about how she had been dating this guy for a few months and they took a camping trip together. They were having sex in the tent and he puts his forearm down on her neck and starts cutting off her air supply. She freaked and thought he was going to kill her to later find out he had a choking fetish he never told her about. Edit, since more than one person has asked, no, the relationship did not last. That's, that's not how you safely choke. That's how you risk killing people. Choking, in a sexual context, involves cutting off the blood to your brain, not the air to your lungs. There might be a bit of pressure on your trachea because, you know, you're squeezing someone's neck, but that's not the focus at all. A forearm on a neck is just going to cause harm. Was talking to a guy online on a dating site, one of those guys that seemed kind of too good to be true. Out of my league, good looking, great job, owned his own home, traveled nationally and internationally once a year on vacation. I figured there had to be a catch. He had a cuckold fetish. I'll give him this, at least he was honest about it early on rather than waiting until I was invested in a relationship. He was also very polite about it when I declined. He was also very polite about it when I declined. I mean, go figure a guy with a cuckold fetish wouldn't be sensitive to a woman bruising his ego. He demanded I call him daddy in the middle of six. So build up, no hint he had a daddy kink. Just demanded it very loudly mid, thrust. I personally feel very uncomfortable with the daddy stuff in relation to sex. Hooray for the people who love it, I ain't one of them. I just moaned louder hoping that would suffice, but I didn't actually say it. Of course, the personal squick was on my mind and killed the mood a bit. I told him later that if he has certain sexual requests he needs to bring them up in advance so we can discuss them and not throw them at me in the middle of fucking. I told him, daddy is not at all my jam, but offered some other things I could call him and asked what he would prefer. Turns out he was begun being called sir. Edit, words. Dude I was talking to a few years ago wanted me to call him daddy. That isn't the weird part, though I'm vehemently against calling my sexual partner daddy since I call my own father daddy. He also wanted me to act like a little kid. 
Also not the weird part. Daddy little girl play is a thing, not my thing, but I try not to judge. The weird part that made me nope was how he continued a stream of comments about how amazing it would be if I was small like a little girl. That it would be so much better if I was completely hairless and had baby fat. It became increasingly apparent he didn't want to just fantasize about age play. He actually wanted a little girl. I ghosted him after that. Creep me the fuck out. I keep reading through these and getting a strong bad feeling that makes me want to downvote, then I remember that that's what the whole thread is about. I was seeing this guy a couple of months. At this point we were exclusive and sleeping together, but weren't much more serious than that. One night, we're getting hot and heavy. He's about a millimeter from actually penetrating me when he stops where he's at and asks me, do you trust me? I wasn't sure what that meant so I asked him exactly that. What do you mean? He wouldn't explain. He just kept repeating do you trust me? Eventually I sort of snapped at him and said I mean we're literally about to have sex. So yeah I guess so. Why? Without answering he just open palm slapped across the face. Hard. I kicked him out of my house and our relationship dissolved shortly thereafter. The kicker. While we were getting to know each other, he told me his ex was into some really rough stuff and that he hated it. And that kids, is called projection. Edit, no shame for having kinks, provided everyone involved is healthy and consenting, and legal, dart. But please don't spring kinks on your partners and definitely don't actively lie about yours if you ever want to try it in the future. The do you trust me line had me hoping for some sort of Aladdin fetish, but I guess he did show you a whole new world. Guy I was dating wanted me to vomit on his dick, or so I assume. He never actually asked for this, he just kept getting more and more aggressive with face fucking. The last time I slept with him he was really being aggressive with the throat dicking, so I said I am going to throw up chill out, but this just prompted him to excitedly suggest we go and continue the BJ in the shower. Not about that, had to PCE out. I threw up once on an ex after I told him I would and he was pissed told him it was his fault since he decided to grab my hair and jam it into my throat and made him clean up the mess. I posted this on another thread a few years ago, but it deserves a repost, comma my ex's workmate told us a story of one of her near misses. I should mention that she was a bit special herself and we heard this story over dinner at her place, which she had invited us to so that I would change some light bulbs for her, since she had no idea how, nor any inclination to learn. She met this guy somewhere online, very early 2000s so online dating wasn't really a mainstream thing yet. He was a successful dentist earning ridiculous money, average too, decent looking, well dressed, driving a brand new BMW etc. He took her somewhere fancy for dinner, wine and conversation flowed, and she happily went back to his place afterwards. His luxury apartment in a swanky service building was almost entirely bare of furniture except for one or two chairs and a mattress on the floor. Turns out he had a gambling problem, and apart from his car and wardrobe, well, floorrobe, apparently all his clothes were piled in corner of the bedroom, pretty much every cent went to the casino. Clothes started coming off anyway, but before touching her he went off to the bathroom to get latex gloves because apparently he also had hardcore germophobia. He couldn't find any so he came back naked except for condoms on his hands, feet and junk, double wrapped, ready to proceed. At this point she noped out, got dressed and left, much to his surprise and bewilderment. He had no idea why she would be weirded out or turned off by any of this. In college I went on a religious retreat with my block. We had an activity with a priest and he made us sit in a giant circle. He told us to share something about ourselves to the class, or to thank a specific classmate for being a good friend etc. Basically a giant heart to heart to help the class bond more. My friend at the time decided it was the perfect opportunity for him to tell everyone that he has fantasies of me, dressed in BDSM, type leather straps while stepping on him and whipping him. Needless to say the priest was very shocked and confused and asked him who he was talking about. My friend then name dropped me and everyone in the class looked at me. I just, sank in my chair and felt like an idiot. Some of my classmates still tease me about that incident. Never talked to the guy ever again after that. 
Several years ago I was just talking to this guy on Occupid, we hadn't even met yet, and he asked me if I'd be okay with erotic hypnosis. I was like what and he sends me a book. However, then he tells me that his last girlfriend and he had gotten into this elaborate fantasy role play and somehow decided that they were actually hypnotizing each other and one night she convinced him she was not real and left him sobbing in a corner. And he wanted to keep doing that. Nope. Nope nope nope. Not a lady, but I was talking to a guy on Tinder, and it seemed to be going just fine. We were talking about life, the recent Star Wars movie Last Jedi, etc. The conversation got a little hot, and he talked about his kinks. He was so involved in them it wasn't even real sex anymore. He didn't like penetrative or oral, so just hand jobs, and was super into leather BDSM. Then he hit me with the big one. Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine roleplay. He wanted me to play Palpatine while he was Vader, stuck on the operating table from that last scene from the prequels. I didn't know why, but he just let loose. I know this is hard to believe, I might have a few screenshots of the conversation, I'll edit the post when I find them. Edit, found it, Imga webpage. In my earlier years before learning of my own depraved kinks, a co-worker from the movie theater I worked at and I were Mark and Spanky when he suddenly whipped out a belt. I looked at him and said H hey, what are you going to do with the belt? He just smiled and said it's okay, it's my work belt. For some reason, the fact that it was the belt he wore to go serve people popcorn and made my brain suddenly accept its new dues. That was the first time I got into bondage, and it's been a fun ride since. What's better is the guy's name was Kyle. And he not only longboarded, but drank three monsters a day. Keep being rad as fuck, Kyle. Guy here but this one confused the crap out of me. I started dating this girl and at first things were normal but she started picking fights with me and then having angry sex. It got to the point that she literally refused to have sex without a loud shouting match first. It was really hard to break up with her because when I told we were through she thought it was foreplay. Eventually I had to just ghost her. He insisted that I had to wear a skirt suit, think Professor Umbridge from Harry Potter, or a chunky sweater cardigan with large buttons for six. Lingerie was a no-go. He was stark naked. I had to stay clothed in grandma clothes. Every other woman he slept with had the same requirements from him. His ex-wife left six, eight garbage bags full of sweaters when they divorced. When I questioned it at first, he threatened to walk away. I went with it, but I never enjoyed it. I was so happy to cut up and throw away all those sweaters when we broke up. Obligatory I'm a girl but I like girls. Hosted a BBQ a while back and spent the drunken evening after flirting with a girl who was using I've always wanted to experiment type lines. We go to my room, things get heavy, and during what was until that point just standard fun. My mouth suddenly fills with something warm and wet and she straight up screamed. My reaction was to jerk away with oh shit, are you okay? But she cut me off by pushing my face back into her chest and saying no, keep going or something to that effect. Turns out part of her experimenting was taking some sort of medication to induce lactation, and the warm stuff I had spat all over both of us was milk. Apparently she was super, super into some kind of maternity fetish. She hadn't been milked for like two days and the screaming was because of immense relief. Ultimately I figured it got her off really hard and TBH didn't taste all that bad so we. We both laughed our asses off when I had to take some lactate before continuing though. 95% fine experience, until during after glow she asked me to nurse and call her mommy. Nah dude. That woman is gonna make some guy girl with a lactation fetish so happy someday. Law. Not me but a friend of mine went on a Tinder date with this dude and went back to his to do the sexy things. They get into his room and he says, so I like to make dinosaur noises when I have sex, hope that's cool, and she's like a cash or whatever. They start getting to it, and he really starts going for it. Not a casual growl or a little rah, but full out pterodactyl and T-Rex noises. So in order for her to not fully lose it laughing. She just joined in with full commitment. 241. Seeing this guy in college, apparently mild-mannered pre-med. 
First time we're having sex, I'm pretty vocal and he does the do we need to do something with that mouth. Line. I'm thinking he wants a blowjob but he immediately produces a huge roll of fancy medical tape out of nowhere and, after politely asking first, proceeds to tape my mouth shut. I was totally into it, so he lucked out there. Same guy some time later, probably feeling emboldened now, is engaged in the act and, in what I presume was a heat of passion, starts calling me a chinky whore, among many other totally inappropriate racial epithets. I got the fuck out of there immediately and we stopped seeing each other shortly thereafter. Moral of the story, don't assume that because your partner is down with one kink they'll be cool with another. I'm sure many people get into ethnically, inaccurate race play but always attain consent first. That goes for introducing any new element into play. Be safe and have fun out there. Do you have Chinese ancestry, or was the chink thing just totally random? Okay, story time. Obligatory not me but a friend. Also, mobile. So, I had this friend who got lucky one night when else were out and ended up going home with a girl to her house. He was a bit weirded out that her room had plastic sheets all over it but she said that she had just moved in or something, but whatever he was going to get some so who cares. So they do the deed and straight after she leaves the room and tells my friend to be ready for round two in a few minutes. My friend is thinking great so the starts to get ready. When she comes back, she had a small damp towel. My friend asks what it is for but the just say nothing, and gets on for round two. A few minutes in she starts to shove this warm, wet towel up my friend's butt. He was taken aback at first but just decided to go with it, for some reason. She said tell me when you are going to come and when the time came, lol. He told her and at that exact moment she yanks the towel out of his butt and he shits everywhere. All over her, the bed, the floor, everything. So yeah, if a sexy lady starts shoving a towel up your butt, beware. Edit. Thanks for the internet points stranger. I had been with my ex for almost two years. We went for a walk in the woods one beautiful afternoon. About halfway through the trail he said he had something important to ask me, and of course I was expecting a proposal, since we had been talking about getting married for a while. Instead of proposing, he asked, if I'll let you get any kind you want, will you have sex with a dog so I can watch? Even something like 12 years later I still have trouble believing he actually asked that. I was very much against it, after I stopped laughing and realized he was serious, dart. We did not stay together, I did not fuck a dog for him. LPT, don't wait to let your significant other know about your deal breaking kinks. Edit, Hugh this blow up. I went through some of the comments but I feel like it would take several hours to answer everything and maybe that's weird. IDK, so here are some answers to frequently asked questions. We lived together at the time, and had a lease. The relationship effectively ended then and there, but we were sort of stuck together for a few more months. As it turns out he'd been fucking his way through my friends for a while anyway. Jokes on them. Despite the theories I've seen floating around, this was not his way of making me break up with him. As I learned later, his harmless bunny avatar was actually his fursona. He had assured me that it was only a casual interest, and he was not a furry. I realized eventually that was wrong. I did not date him knowing he was a furry. We weren't together for 12 years, we were only together around 2, including dating and the actual, official relationship. This happened roughly 12 years ago, between maybe 2006 and the end of 2007. I might be getting the dates wrong, it's a while ago. I've always wondered how couples who actually do those kinds of things go from being a normal couple to that, apparently it's by directly asking while in the middle of the woods. I had been talking to this guy online for a few days for an ERP thing. It was great, we had so many kinks in common, I'd never met anyone before who I meshed so well with. He was in his 50s now, with grown kids, and one day he told me out of the blue that when his daughters were little I never did anything, but I had a hard time keeping my hands to myself. I was so disgusted I blocked him immediately. That was like 5 years ago and it still haunts me. As a bonus to this story, he was a retired police officer. Because of course he was. 
Yeah not mine but a female friend has a few. 1. Goes on a date with a guy, all goes well, they go back to his and he drops this can I fuck your head. She asks if he meant a blowjob no I want my dick inside your ear she politely declined and left. He was very understanding apparently. 2. She dated this guy for around 6 months and he never wanted to have sex. The only way they were ever intimate was when they were in the shower and she would have her back turned to him whilst he tugged and came all over her back. 3. She went on a Tinder date and it was going well until the guy said I want you to peg me she was thinking about it but then he really went into detail and it was too much for her. He was saying stuff like I want you to dominate me I want to be your bitch you need to really hurt me, make me scream, bruise me and rearrange my insides you get the picture. He cried when she turned him down. She's got like 10 more like this. Edit, 1. Wow we are both shocked how this just kind of blew up. Anyway, she's going to be giving me some more stories later she's just a bit busy at the minute so hang tight. She has however told me about a date she had a few months ago so I'll slip that one in here. This one was with a woman that she really liked. The date was going great until, well, this. Well call my friend Cake and we'll call the woman Misty. Misty, so do you like bringing food into the bedroom? Cake, well I've tried the normal stuff, whipped cream, chocolate sauce, those things, what did you have in mind? Misty, seafood, Cake was wondering if she actually wanted to continue the conversation but she's too curious so she asked what kind of seafood. And Misty replied with fish, octopus, crabs, crayfish, you know the usual Cake politely declined. Unfortunately every time my friend looks at seafood now she is reminded of the incredible detail that woman went into about what she wanted to do with a poor helpless crab. I met a guy years ago while out with friends. It was just after a messy breakup but I wasn't looking for anything, just happy to be out having drinks and dancing. In a hoe, he was eyeing me all night and he finally came over to chat. My male friends in our group did the protective she's with us made thing so he left our table and later started chatting to my friend at the bar. She brought him back to our table, and said to me, he's hot and he's really into you. Okay. I chatted with him gave him my number and we set to leave. Friend, now ex-friend lost her shit in a drunken rage and abused me for not going home with him. One night stands weren't my thing. Guy calls me the next day and asks for a date. Okay. He was hot. Turns out he was attracted to my shaved, undercut. And asked if he could shave all my hair off while he fucked me over the bathroom sink. I was intrigued cause I don't kink shame nobody. It is a thing and he showed me his favorite bold porn star etc. Sadly, hot as he was, he was dumber than dog shit so I cut him off. Weeks later out the blue he rocked up to my house in the middle of the night begging to come in and just touch my undercut, no sex. Yeah whatever mate. Eek. I locked the doors and told him to fuck off. He was a weird one. Never heard from him again thankfully. Obligatory not me but a friend. I was seeing this woman and she told me about this guy she had met at the bar with a friend that she was really into. Something about him she said he was just really sexy. Anyway the three of them were back at the apartment on her couch and... Her friend says she's going to go grab some more beers from her apartment down the hall and she'll be right back. The girl I was seeing is very sexual and she saw this as an opportunity. She asked him if he thought he could come before she got back with the beers. He said I'm willing to try so she started going down on him furiously seeing if she can make him come before her friend got back. A few seconds into it he grabs the back of her head and starts forcing it down. No biggie. She has no gag reflex and likes rough blowjobs so she's totally down with that. Then she hears a click, and feels something hard pressed against the back of her head. This asshole, mid blowjob, pulled out a revolver and cocked the hammer and put it to her head. Then started telling her he was going to pull the trigger if she didn't make him, come before she got back. Keep in mind, he was already no doubt getting the best blowjob of his life. He came about two terrifying minutes later and she sat up quietly freaking out. He noticed she was second from either screaming or busting, out crying and he asked what was wrong. It wasn't loaded or anything, honestly. Apparently the guy gets off on gunplay and didn't feel it pertinent to tell anyone ahead of time. Edit, since there was a lot of interest in this story I will give a quick follow up to some questions. 
No she did not call the police. When her friend arrived back to the apartment he had gone to the bathroom and she could see that her friend was shaken up so she went back to the bathroom and told him to leave immediately. A month or so later he found her on FB and messaged her apologizing and asking her to get together. She declined. Also it should be noted I was just as horrified as you guys were to hear this even more so because she was someone I cared about. She told me she still sees him around town from time to time and that he owns a vape shop but would not give me any of his information and asked that I just let it go being as it was a few years prior and she didn't want to dredge up bad memories. She has been a lot more careful since that incident. The thing that scares me the most about this guy is that it must have been a power trip because it was completely unnecessary. She was willingly doing that for him and having fun. And he took it upon himself to pull a gun and take advantage of her. I sincerely hope he never pulls that stunt or worse again on another woman. A few seconds into it he grabs the back of her head and starts forcing it down. Gag reflex or not, you should definitely warn ask before doing that, comma this asshole, mid blow job, pulled out a revolver and cocked the hammer and put it to her head, and it was at this point I really thought oh. Fuck. The second or third time that me and my current boyfriend had sex, he felt comfortable enough to inform me that he's really into edging, deprivation, teasing, pegging and cross-dressing. He brought out his collection of plugs, cages, and panties to show me, and when I didn't run for the hills, he went on to buy a bunch more ladies wear, heels, dildos, and various other sex toys over the next month or two. It was a lot in a very short amount of time. I will admit to being taken aback when he first brought this up to me, since we'd only been dating a little over a month. And I was a little worried we were getting weird too fast, but I was surprisingly really into it. We've been together two years now, and it's a routine part of our sex life to explore kink. Couples that aren't afraid to get weird together, stay together. Friend told about this. They were having a girl sleepover in high school and since there were more than four people they slept in the living room. It just so happens that she had an older brother living there and when it was like 2am or something her older brother snuck into the living room and started touching one of her friend's feet. She said thought it was the cat at first. She just quickly sat up and he ran back to his room. All in the dark by the way, it was never talked about but it's heavily implied it was her older brother to this day. Yikes. Once had sex with a guy I met off Tinder. I instantly liked him so we met again some other time. We smoked some weed and got down to business again. This was my first time being high, so I didn't think much of the things he said back then, but not I get so weirded out. He said to me, while pounding me hard, say you're 12. Say it. I said it and he instantly came. I have never been more disgusted. So this actually happened to my best friend Drew, who is a male, but it's worth sharing. He was fooling around with this girl he had met, and he could not get her off. They screwed countless times, and he would try anything he could to get her off, but he couldn't do it. She claimed the sex was great and never mentioned anything to make it better for her. So finally he just asks if there's anything he can do to get her off, and she says she has a kink but it scares everyone off. He asks what it is and explains that he isn't most guys and he'll do whatever, and she asks, would you be willing to take a shit on me? I'm kind of weird, but there's something really sexy about having a guy treat me like garbage. My buddy was finally convinced to do said act, and propped over her midsection and lays a huge steamer right on her tit's stomach region as she plays with herself. To this day, he says he has never heard any girl come harder than when this turd made landfall on her. We later found out that Drew was not the first person we know she asked to dump on her. Several people we know told us they had been solicited, but only Drew made her dreams come true I guess. Oh man, story time. Met a guy a long time ago on this site called Guy Online when I was 12 or 13. One of the things you can do is get special items that can turn your human avatar into an animal like a unicorn, dog, cat, etc. So I'm running around as a unicorn and he's running around as a centaur. We go to an area called the rally where people showcase their decorated cars and such. We're playing hide and seek behind some cars and he come behind one and does what I realize now was roleplay fucking my unicorn me. Weird. Yeah number. 
by. Few months later, he's made a new account and apologized to me about what happened. Alright fine. We become friends which eventually led to us dating. He's from Michigan and I'm in Florida so we use Skype to see and chat with each other. Everything is going good until he decides to drop a bomb on me. He sends me links to some site with stories written about incest, bestiality, vor, pedophilia, crazy shit. I'm confused as to where this is coming from. Why are you sending me this? Then he confesses he has the hots for me and my sister and wondered if we'd both be down to do all kinds of sexual shit with him. I nope the fuck, out of there. There were so many red flags with this but I was still a kid that didn't understand the shit I was doing or seeing. I mean for crying out loud, he was 18 when we first met. Glad I got out of it when I did. Last I heard of him, he roams on Gary's mod servers fucking around with my little pony ragdolls with dicks. To answer the second question of whether I was into it or not, I'll call someone daddy in the bedroom but that's as far as it goes. Oh man guy online. I played it shortly as a kid too. I met this guy who was completely trying to convince me he was a vampire, like, actual vampire. I went on a lovely date once. Just to the local pizzeria, but the slices were hot and the convo was good. I was feeling pretty optimistic about this one. He had a job and a car and was an overall gentleman. I invited him into my car to smoke a J after pizza. I should mention it was summer as, I had Birkenstock ESQ sandals on. So we are talking and talking and I had my foot, without sandal on, tucked underneath me. He says, can I see that? And gestures to my foot. Now, I'm a lot of full of pizza and a little stone so I said, my foot. And stretched my leg out cause I'm a dope. He started, licking my toes in this, what I would imagine should have been sensual sort of way. All the while I have, this face, oh no gif, Saturday Night Live Maya Rudolph SNL, discover and share gif's web page, going on thinking about how the humidity was 90% and I am pretty sure I have had these sandals since Brittany and Justin dated so dear lord my feet must smell. He, thankfully, figured out I was not into big toe play or whatever the fuck these young kids be calling it and actually ask me. He said, oh you didn't like that. And all I could muster was that was, different. Needless to say a second date did not occur. E, oh shit, silver and gold. You can Cornelius. Lol sweet, THX boo. I personally am not interested in feet and don't think I have especially great ones. But I was with a dude who was all about using my feet to give himself for jobs. I didn't even have to do anything. I could literally just sit there and read a library book and he would rub my feet on his dick until he got off. It was pretty great for everyone involved. He got to have an orgasm, I got to finish my library books before they were due, it was a win-win. I was dipping my toe in the pool of online dating. This guy seemed nice enough. He was my brand of dorky and weird, we hadn't met yet but I asked him out for coffee. Between the time I asked him and the actual date, we kept talking and trying to get to know each other. We decided to play 20 questions, because I'm a loser. He dropped the bomb that he had a pregnancy and belly inflation fetish. He sent me a video, and I've never been the same since. The worst part is that I couldn't bring myself to cancel the date that I initiated. We had a decent time but the fetish was all I could think about. He asked me to go out with him again after and I just, couldn't. Told my therapist about this when she asked why I was hesitant about dating and she laughed so hard. She still brings it up every now and then. FML. I was in bed with my first boyfriend on top of me, licking my entire face like a dog cause that's what he thought making out was, when he randomly shoves his nose into my armpit and takes a big sniff. Then he asks me if he can lick my armpit. I was like bro WTF and he told me he had an armpit fetish. I was like that's cool but no thanks. Then like a week later he was hovering over me in bed again and he has a line of spit hanging out of his mouth. So I instinctively move out of the way and he slurps it back up and tells me he wants to spit in my mouth cause he has a spit fetish. Didn't even know that was a thing. They were pretty tame but just super gross. It sounds like rather than a fetish he just didn't know what he was doing. 
don't get me wrong armpit and spit fetishes are a thing but from the story, it just sounds like he was new to this whole business and was trying to act freaky. I was dating a guy and about 6 months in he tells he he likes to be spat in and around his mouth, face and chest. I wasn't into it to say the least. Edit, I remember another one. My friend was telling me how she was on a Tinder date that was going well. She went over his apartment, ate some spaghetti and had a great time. Then towards the end of their meal she starts to feel a bit sick. She goes to the bathroom and proceeds to shit her brains out. She's so embarrassed and can't believe that just happened. She explains what happens to the guy he says it's all okay and will take care of it and everything's fine for the rest of the night. IDK what happened to the clothes but we will get to that soon. So, a couple days later she's talking to one of her close guy friends and is telling him the story of what happened. Turns out her friend knows that guy and has done that to multiple girls before. He has a fetish for women spontaneously shitting themselves and cleaning up after. I guess he kept my friend's dirty ass garments for his own pleasure. Edit 2. Sorry I didn't clarify. Yes he put laxatives in the spaghetti. Dude like. I know it's just laxatives, but you could mess someone up that way. That's not just no second date material, that's consider calling the cops. Met this guy online, we were about to meet up and then he asked if I could bring some worn, preferably very dirty and sweaty, socks to the date. I was like, pardon me, and be admitted he had a sock fetish. Not shoes, barely even feet, but socks cringed so hard. I kindly told him I could not do that. Then he asked if I still wanted to come to the date and if we had a relationship and I still didn't want to give him worn socks, he could just order them online from other people. Kindly declined his offer. So, my friend met this guy at Dragon Con and one thing led to another and she ended up in his hotel room. Now, she's a cosplayer and was dressed as Alice from Alice in Wonderland, and she went to the bathroom to freshen up calm down her wig hair with some water take her costume off, and she heard commotion coming from the room. She ran out thinking something was wrong to find the guy on the bed, wearing nothing but a furry head and a massive erection. He just responded by saying woof. Now my friend had no idea he was a furry, he was not in costume when they met hours earlier, nor had she agreed to this kink. So, without saying a word, she grabbed her costume and wig and ran down the hall of the Marriott half naked, trying to put her costume back on as she ran. A friend of hers found her later outside chain, smoking as if her life depended on it and asked her what the hell happened. She responded with I went too far down the rabbit hole. Well, this will be a little bit out of topic, but I have a profile in a fetish site. I, myself, don't have some extraordinary or odd fetishes, but I do get contacted by men constantly and them asking me to do random stuff to them. One of the dudes wanted me to dress in two plastic bags, not sure, like garbage bags or just plastic raincoats? And bang him. Another dude wanted me to wear high heels and step on his balls with the heel and kick him there and pee on him and call him in the most disgusting names. And a different dude asked me to check into a random hotel room and get naked and put on a blindfold and chain myself to bed and then he and his very old friends would come in when they please and do whatever they want and take turns raping me. Needless to say that getting these kind of messages is scary enough, not even thinking about going through with them. Reading these messages also make me want to do the missionary for the rest of my life and watch puppy videos. This is not going to be your typical story here. My dad died. I hired a company to clean out his apartment because he was a bit of a hoarder. I couple of days later I get a call. Hey, um, can I ask you something? Did your dad run a mail order business? Number. Not that I'm aware of. Why? Um, we found a lot of DVDs. Porn DVDs. Like, quantity. All kinds. Okay. Cool. You guys hit the off load then. According to our contract, you guys can sell all that. Um number. We're going to have to charge you extra for handling and disposal. We had to have a police in. What the fuck? What did he have? Um. Remember I said all kinds. He had, all kinds. And I left it at that. Many years ago I waited tables in a big city while in school. After my shift, 
I grabbed a cab towards my boyfriend's apartment. The cab driver asked if he could pick up a second fare, I said sure. As the young guy he picked up hopped in the front seat, I quickly changed from my sweaty work shoes into flip flops in the back seat. Then, the cab driver asked if he could pick up a third fare. We both said sure, and second fare guy moved to the back seat with me. As I'm wiggling my achy toes around from being on my feet all day, the dude next to me tells me he's a masser, and hands me his business card. He says that he can show me a pressure point on my bottom of my foot that will help my achy feet, and asks me to take my shoe off. My leg is crossed and facing him, and he grabs my shoe. He looks harmless, is well dressed, and has a business card, so I'm like, whatever, right? Seconds later, his mouth is around my big toe, as we pull up to my boyfriend's apartment. I'm screaming and whacking him with my shoe, he's howling laughing. As I ran out of the cab, he screamed only in, big sitter baby. The cab driver and the third fare in the front seat were looking at us wondering what the heck just happened. I was on and off with a guy who I had known for years. We knew each other very well and shared many of the same kinks. One day without warning in the middle of some rough six, possibly choking me at the time, which I was into, he threatened to kill me and hide my body so no one would ever find me. I was, not into it. I don't remember if I started crying immediately or was frozen in fear for a bit first, but I definitely started crying at one point. He apologized. Not sure why I didn't run screaming into the night as my next step but I'm smarter these days. Edit, typos. He didn't tell me, I just kind of found it one day and asked him about it. And x200b, we were living together in a house in college. We shared this house with a punk printmaker, an alcoholic painter, and a drag queen photographer. Two of the rooms shared a closet between them more of a tunnel than a closet, and one day I found a box that wasn't there before, but clearly on my side of the tunnel. Inside was a ton of tights, some pretty dresses, and some heels. So I asked myself if this was our box or the drag queens. He kind of clammed up and said he didn't want to talk about it. Alright. So I gave him some time and space to figure out how he wanted to explain it to me, about a few weeks. We were driving about 7 hours to his parents house, and I got impatient so I said can we please talk about the box now. And x200b, and he obliged, explaining how he liked to dress in women's clothing, how he came to realize his fetish. And I could tell he was super nervous, who wouldn't be? So I asked him if he would like to dress up for me. I'm B, and I kind of miss being with girls, so why not see if I like it too. So he did, and it was sexy. It kind of filled that part of me that missed the feel of another female form. He has better taste in bras than I do, and I steal his favorite pair of leggings to wear myself, comma. Okay so this is not what was asked for but still kind of relevant. I have never heard of anyone else with this fetish. I was around 15-16. I don't even know where I got to know this girl, fan fiction net perhaps. I honestly don't know. We talked through emails only and we talked about shoes at first. We both loved shoes. She was older than me, I think in her early 20s, and could buy way more and way cooler shoes than me. Then she started asking me to send her photos of me wearing my shoes. Nothing else, just my feet and shoes. I wasn't comfortable with that so I declined. She always accepted that without any fuss and would send me photos of her feet and shoes. Then it got weird. She asked if I had ever had my legs in a cast and I said, number. She said that both her legs were in one right now and sent me pictures. I felt really bad for her but she explained that she loved it. She had this guy that would do it for her for free if he got to ejaculate on her new cast. She asked if I wanted to try it and that she could hook me up. I declined. This weirded me out but she was so nice and easy to talk to so I kept talking to her for a while after. Ever so often she would send me photos of her legs and new casts, talking about which color of bandages she picked this time. Always describing how wonderful it felt, how naked she felt without them. Nudging me, recommending me to try it but never really pushed. We stopped talking after a while. I don't remember which one of us that stopped replying. I know now that she was grooming me into her fetish. She was lonely and depressed. 
maybe there was no she, I never saw her face, but the photos seemed to be of the same person in the same room. It felt like a girl writing. Wherever you are strange cast girl I hope you're doing well, TL, DR, teenage me, straight girl, met a girl online who had a thing for shoes, feet and having her legs in casts. She tried getting me into it which didn't work. Not me, but a very good friend of mine. I think her second. Time being intimate with this guy, he asked to come in her butt and seal it with wax. She thanked him for his vulnerability, declined, and stopped seeing him shortly thereafter. My personal favorite part of this story is that it was told to me only after she said hey so. I need you to tell me if this is a thing, no, friend. That is indeed not a thing. 2 for 1 special, I'll start with one that's less weird than the other. To preface, I am a very subby woman. I don't like being a dom and will only be a dom if my partner really wants me to. Anyway, I was making out with my ex-boyfriend. We were naked, getting ready to the dirty when out of nowhere, he turns around and wants me to eat his ass. Anal anything grossed me out personally so I was obviously against it and shocked as to where TF that kink came from. He, apparently, was also a sub who wanted his girlfriend to peg him. Not a huge fan. Second was when my ex called me a little chunky, I was 95 pounds and 5 feet 5, dart. I was a little taken off guard cause I was obviously underweight. I found out later it's cause he wanted to fuck me in a coffin to pretend I was a corpse. Yeah. Necrophiliac. He liked me cause I was real a pale and skinny. I'd rather peg a dude than pretend to be a corpse for my bf to fuck tbh. It may be too late for anyone to see this but I got a creepy PM once and decided to go with it because I was bored, and online dating is what it is. He just asked a lot of questions about what I liked sexually and I answered them all and was having fun with it. Eventually he's really turned on and tells me there's something he really wants to tell me about, but it's embarrassing. I was expecting some kind of humiliation fetish with the way he was hemming and hawing but eventually he sent me a video to explain himself. The video was him masturbating to the scene in the Jungle Book where Shikan chases Baloo the bear around a tree and bites him in the butt, and in the video, he came the second the bud was bit. I politely and swiftly exited the conversation. Most specific kink I have ever encountered and I had no idea what to say. First boyfriend I ever got physical with, we were both about 14 and he's fingering me. All seems well until he looked up at me and started jackhammering and scratching my insides, pulls his fingers out and wipes blood on his mattress, laughs about the blood and shows it to everyone that comes over after that. We broke up shortly after. He also coerced me into anal that I cried during. Fast forward to us both being 20, were friends again for about 2 years after not talking for years. New Year's Eve this year he messages me out of nowhere and begs me to piss in his mouth so he can drink it. I politely decline but he keeps on and keeps on begging for me to piss in his mouth. I told him no and he started sending lots of Eurus lap messages. Needless to say we're back to not speaking. Weird little Mathurfica. I'm a guy too. I was dating this theologian from a respected university who was a fair bit older than me, over a decade. We would watch some religious movies to analyze and talk about over a glass of wine. At first I thought it was very informative and a great way to learn more about religion, you know good old food for thought. But it would inevitably always end with us having rough sex and I'm not just talking about your typical Netflix and chill. Imagine Jesus Christ being crucified onto the cross, blood dripping down and behind him, morbid moans and women wailing perforating the room sonically. These religious themed films became the soundtrack to our six. Oh and she insisted I rape her repeatedly. But, at this point, comparatively speaking I think the rape fantasy is a fairly normal submissive fantasy. Also I recommend watching Hadjewich, 2009, a French film. Obligatory, I'm a male, story about one of my best girl mates. So my friend starts seeing the barman at our local, pretty casual. We obviously go for a bit of a wind up every time he's on shift when we are in. As you do. Banter. Well, one evening, a couple of weeks into their fledgling relationship, I see him coming over to our table to have a chat and grab the empties, 
so I raise my voice to fake shock and say you're telling me that the strap on he wanted you to use already had some shit stains on it. Well, both of them turned a very vibrant scarlet color, and he turned round and just walked away. After a few minutes, she admitted that she had indeed been using a strap on on him the previous evening. I did go and apologize to him later on, explained that I had only been having a giggle and wasn't kink shaming. He took it well, no pun intended, and it was never mentioned again. TLER. Accidentally guessed that my local barman was into pegging, that my friend had complied with his request, and inadvertently told the entire pub. I'm going to answer this as a guy. So I was wearing my business socks, getting down to it for the first time with this little French Egyptian wild thing. Things were going pretty good, she was a pleaser for sure, and while I was on top, looking down, she says in the sweetest voice, do you want to punch me in the head? I replied with, number. So she punches herself in the head like three times before I could hold down her arm, I pulled out and said, I'm done for today then ghosted her. Turns out she had an abusive ex-BF that would always do that. I felt terrible that I ghosted her but I was not equipped to deal with someone like that. During our honeymoon, I made what seemed at the time a silly comment to my husband about how I thought of him as beautiful rather than handsome. A month or so later, my husband revealed to me that he's gender fluid and likes to be a woman during sex. I'm B, and am totally more than, okay with this. Our sex life has only gotten better. It's amazing that we are so compatible and didn't even find out about it until after we were married, since we already were totally in love with each other before the reveal. Now though, I love how he shifts to feminine mannerisms when he's feeling frisky. I'd hate to think of how it would be if he had married someone who was not cool with this, having to constantly repress it or even be ashamed of it depending on the attitudes of the person. That would just be sad was on a blind date with a guy. We were chatting and while I was talking he suddenly got this look on his face like he just had to say something. I paused and asked him if everything was alright. He then proceeded to tell me he had a huge, foot fetish. This wasn't even in the context of the conversation. I'm just staring at him while he goes on and on about it and how it's totally not weird and blah blah blah. I'm not a judgmental person about people's fetishes but the whole, situation was weird. It was so sudden and out of context. I was also wearing sandals. I left. Was dating a super sweet guy, as far as I was aware he didn't watch porn masturbate because of his parents, religious family, out of nowhere while we were talking about the fact I wasn't a virgin he told me he was into for, like being eaten and living inside someone's stomach. Had literally no clue what that was at the time. Got home and googled it, hell no for me. I don't want to play with that fetish at all. Not even pretending. We broke up for unrelated reasons, super nice guy. Just into some stuff I am not. Edit, also, saw a few on here which I didn't think were weird but another partner liked for me to use the n word if I was describing his dick and basically have me say fuck society, I'm getting fucked by a black guy because he said it racially empowers him course he's dominating a small white woman when that would have been dangerous for him not too long ago, which was a lot more acceptable of looking to me than the wanting me to eat him thing. Ended up liking it because I like serving for lack of a better explanation. I don't like being treated like trash but I definitely like my partner to be above me in power. Well I'm pretty kinky so it's a bit hard to cause a freak out in that area. I actually like discussing fetishes and kinks and where they come from feel like I know people much more directly than. In my past relationships the things people here might think as the most extreme are 8 play and p play, but I always find with some discussions of details and establishing clear boundaries there can be fun for everyone. For example I've had two exes who were into p play, but in different ways. One loved watching the struggle of holding back the p and ultimately failing. The other liked to watch me pee as a kind of secret peek inside my most private moments. Honestly out of all the crazy things though, surprisingly the thing that I was not okay with was being made to wear my underwear on my head. It was a form of humiliation and I'm not down with that. Different strokes, A. 3. Female here. I once had a Tinder date invite me over to hook up. 
Everything was going smoothly till he stopped in the middle of everything to say, Okay that's enough of the bland stuff. Let's get this party started. He proceeded to change into a pink dress, full chastity cage, frilly panties, and tossed me nipple clamps and a flogger. We discussed my kink for being a submissive. Turns out he was into it too. I'm the guy in this instance, but I had sent a nice cum shit video to my partner, not out of the blue, there was context. Due to some poor camera work and height and expectations, she made a comment about how small I was, I am by no metric small, dot. Oddly enough, that's about as turned on as I've ever been and I've since told her that I love her telling me my dick is tiny and inadequate. She enjoys it sometimes but has said sometimes she's afraid she goes too far or is being mean, so we're working in finding a balance. Vor. He was my best friend at the time so it was whatever. I didn't really care until he began to steer conversations towards his fantasies. For example I'd mention that I ate a sandwich and he would say something like, Can I be your sandwich? He absolutely crossed the line when he talked about a vor fantasy that involved swallowing my little sister. Keep in mind that my sister was 7 years old at the time. He thought it wasn't a big deal but for me it was. I was disgusted and shocked that he thought it was okay. Guy told me about his foot fetish after like 15 minutes of knowing him. Grossed me out because I have a deep aversion to feet. I will not touch your feet. I will not massage your feet. Do not ever touch my feet under any circumstance. No you can't touch, prod poke or fondle my feet in any way shape or form. The guy said his ex didn't like it either but let him, in a way that suggested I need to put my dislikes aside to please him. No thanks. Still don't like feet. So I am a guy and I'm very open. I have this female friend who is married to another friend of mine. She's admitted to me openly in front of her husband that she is into rape play and that her husband can't do it, because he feels wrong about it and he goes soft. He's pretty good about these things, he's told me when they first tried anal, when they first introduced toys, etc etc. They are pretty damn cool about that shit. Now I've had a crush on this girl long before she met her husband and I've never hidden that fact from either of them. We've openly talked about it many times and I flirt with her and she flirts with me with her husband's blessing as she and I have fun. They aren't swingers or anything, but apparently something about me makes it okay. He is not a very take charge kind of guy, which is surprising considering he is a big loud guy with lots of muscle. I on the other hand, shorter than both of them, am a very take charge guy, very rough and not afraid to show it. I have never done anything sexual with her, except once when we were drunk we showed each other what we looked like naked. We were both happy with what we saw, but I have openly admitted to both of them, I want to sleep with her. She is very open to it, and brings it up to me every time I see her, whether he is in earshot or not. I've said that unless he comes to me without her present and tells me it's okay, I'll never do it. One day he said to me, he really wanted me to, because he couldn't fulfill a few of her needs, and feels like she deserves it because she is such a great woman. He asked me to sneak into his house when he was visiting his mother in a different town, dressed in all black with a mask and rape his wife and that she was the ones that requested it. Gave me written consent from both him and his wife, instructions written and even gave me the mask, which was described in the contract, and a key to the house. He messages me every time he's going to his mother's alone and I have made excuses every time. I want to go for it, but by god if it goes wrong shit could get real bad, real fast. It's probably pretty mild, but it was annoying as hell. I went on a date with a guy from uni I met online. Things started out pretty well. He was funny and we shared a lot of interests. Then the alcohol in his drink started to kick in. He started to quiz me on my female friends who he had seen on a couple of photos I had in my gallery. He kept asking over and over which of my friends I would bang and if I had ever fooled around with any of them. I tried to brush it off, but he just wouldn't let it go. Man. I gave him several outs but he always kept coming back to the same point. Sorry, still not B, Chris. Thank you for asking for the fifth time. Ah yes. The story of Wackahoe. Before I left for college, 
a chubby, yet cute waitress I work with comes up to me and in very blunt terms asks for my penis in her mouth. Me, 18 with a penis, was very okay with this. She sucks me off and then curls up next to me. About a half hour later she says another one. And I was like, oh for sure. I didn't get a lot of head at that time and it was welcome. Midway through she says, hit me so I smack her with minimal force. Number. Hard so I wind up and smack her. It leaves a pretty good mark. After she finishes me, she says now fucking punch me. Don't be a pussy this time so I clock the shit out of her. She loved it. She called me every weekend for months asking for some fun but I never went back. All in all, the 9th of August 10 but that shit hurt my hand. A friend told me of a widowed friend of hers. She lived celibate a good while before trying the dating scene again. On her first serious date which ended in bed, met a guy who close to a blowjob climax yelled put your finger up my ass. It was the last time she met him, so I don't think she was down for it, but as far as I understood it wasn't meant to be a lasting thing. My friend didn't seem too judgmental about the fetish, we more joked about the way he put it out there. I'm not a lady, but I've got one. A while back I was in a Twitch chat and I have a habit of being flirty in a banter kind of way with guys, I'm pansexual, but I try to make it pretty clear it's just banter. Well one dude didn't get the memo and since I have wolf in my name he decided it meant I was into furry stuff. For the record, I'm not, but I have no problem with people who are. So the dude private messaged me and we were kind of casual talking. He asked how old I was and then told me he was 48. 20 years older than me, and asked if I was okay with older men and I was like yeah sure I guess. This is when it clicked the dude was interested in me. Yeah I know that was kind of slow of me, but I'd thought maybe he was just lonely and wanted someone to talk to leading up to this. That's happened to me before and usually it's just friendly. So anyway, he got around to asking what I'm into and if I have any kinks and I said yeah I guess, I'm pretty open minded. Then he asks Doggy. I said yeah sure I guess and he starts going into a detailed description of how he wants to help me get knotted and that's when I realized I just mistakenly told a man old enough to be my father, that I'm into bestiality thinking he was asking if I was in two doggy style. I noped out of that conversation and never responded back to him again. Different guy. I had just broken up with my ex-girlfriend and was kind of floundering around, not sure what to do with myself anymore and post-breakup loneliness hitting me pretty hard, so I decided to try a chat room and see if I could meet anyone. I got a message from a guy asking the usual RSL and expected him to stop messaging when I said mail, cause that's usually how chat rooms go for me. Instead he told me he was nearly 60 and asked if I was cool with it, which I was. We chat a while and he starts talking about how he wants to move me into his house and basically be my sugar daddy, which tbh weirded me out a bit because we had been talking for maybe 20 minutes max at this point, but he had decided I was perfect for him already. Few minutes later he asked if we were to go through with that arrangement if I would ever cheat on him. I have a strict no cheating policy because I've been on the shit end of that way too, many times, so I said no never. Little bit later he's talking about how he would want to take me out to the bar and show me off. Alright, then asks what I would do if other men started hitting on me in the bar right in front of him. At this point I'm catching on and I said IDK what would you want me to do? Next thing I know he's describing how he would want me to go to the bar, alone and pick up preferably black men with huge cocks to bring back to our house and fuck them. Asked if I would pick up men on the corner and fuck them for money, let them shoot me up with drugs and pretty much become a black cock loving heroin addicted cum slut fucking multiple men in our bed while he was forced to watch and support me financially while I let all these men use me. On the plus side he said he would want to marry me before any of this went down. I was a f bored aft by this point while he was still running through his mental list of all the ways I could fuck up my life while making him watch and then he suddenly turned on a dime and was like what if I didn't want you to fuck other men. And I was just like. It wasn't my idea man. Then starts talking about how he would want me all to himself and would treat me like a king and to please never cheat on him and, I'm just baffled by all of it. The entire encounter lasted maybe 35 to 40 minutes and is the single most bizarre experience I've ever had and the reason I do not go on random chat rooms anymore, 